A year ago today, J.K. Rowling published her essay about sex and gender and why she spoke up. She wrote about me and my employment tribunal, where it was judged that the belief that sex is real, immutable and important was unworthy of respect in a democratic society. She wrote about the culture of fear in organisations and she said the one thing that gave her hope was that more and more people are speaking up. Thousands of ordinary people supported my case. And today, I'm pleased and proud to say that we have been vindicated. In a landmark judgment handed down this morning by Justice Chowdhury in the Employment Appeal Tribunal, the previous judgment was overturned. Gender critical beliefs are protected under the Equality Act and people who hold those beliefs are protected against discrimination and harassment. Under the European Convention on Human Rights, only the most extreme views akin to totalitarianism or Nazism are excluded from protection. And the judge said that my belief, which is widely shared and does not seek to destroy the rights of trans people, clearly did not fall into that category. He said, a person is free in a democratic society to hold any belief they wish, subject only to some modest objective minimum requirements. Being free to hold a belief means the freedom from being harassed, discriminated against, or having your livelihood taken away from you if you express that belief. It doesn't mean the freedom to harass others. That was never what my case was about. Gender critical beliefs and gender identity beliefs are both protected under the Equality Act and so too is lack of belief. No one can be forced to profess a belief that they do not hold, like trans women are women, trans men are men, and punished if they refuse. My judgment means that organisations now need to consider whether their policies, encouraged by trans rights organisations, discriminate against people with gender critical views. I'm proud of the role that I've played in clarifying the law and inspiring more people to speak up. But we can't leave the burden on individuals to put this right. We have to tackle institutional capture. That's why I've co-founded a new organisation, Sex Matters. We have a singular mission to re-establish clarity about sex in law, policy and language. This is about single sex services. It's about women's refuges, women's prisons, women's sports. It's also about doctors, parents, teachers and young people themselves being able to question the narrative about being born in the wrong body. Fundamentally, it's about people being able to talk about the material reality of sex. Be braver today than you were yesterday. We invite you to join Sex Matters. We want to protect everybody's rights. We think this is worthy of respect in a democratic society and we hope you will join us.